Welcome to the Making Awesome Podcast, Season 3, Episode 13. We're going to be doing an episode that is all because of my dad. Uh, he had this idea a while back, and my brother reminded me that we have never done a episode on this. And it is 3D printing buying guide for clueless parents. Um, and, and I put it in the description, but I'll go through it, right? My dad watches all the videos. In fact, he's probably watching the stream now. Hi, Dad. And he said, he said, Grant, I still don't understand. He said, so, you know, let's pretend you don't have a ton of 3D printers. You are clearly the target market for 3D printers. I would not know what to get. And that worries me because I don't want you to have something that you're not going to enjoy. And even further, I don't want to get something that's going to become my headache when it's supposed to be your toy, machine, whatever it might be. Uh, there's a lot of nuance to this because it's not its not always as easy as just go buy a Prusa, right? Now, if it could be that easy, that's exactly what I would say, right? To parents that don't know what to buy that have all of this if you don't know what to buy and you don't have a ton of money Prusa is not your answer if you don't know what to buy and you have a ton of money and you have a thousand dollars to spend on a 3d printer go buy a Prusa just go buy a Prusa Mark 3s mini or whatever the uh future successor to the Mark 3s might be if you're listening to this in the future uh for those that are listening to this in the future, we are recording this on December 11th, 2022, to give you an idea of when it is being done. And if you are listening audio only, we do these every weekend or Monday-ish uh, every week for the past three years now. And my goal is to just help inspire people to get into this industry with knowledge. And sure, I'm certainly not the smartest person on the planet. Most of you know this by now. but. I know a thing or two about this industry. I've been in it for 15 years and made a lot of cool stuff. So, you know, we'll see. Geek Toy Box. And we do have a live chat as well. So if you are watching the playback, make sure you enable the live chat so you can see who I'm talking to. And it doesn't appear that I'm an absolute idiot. And if you are listening audio only, I'm sorry. There might be some things that won't come through 100%. Uh, and Tarzman 13 says your headache. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 <laughs> my brother is currently going through this situation of a cheap printer and expecting the world out of it. And unfortunately it's not working well. And I will say a lot of that is because Tronxy sucks as a company and you should never buy from them. It's Tron XY. Um, you shouldn't buy from them. Uh, but his printer at 140 bucks, we even went through it. It's like, look, even if you got to replace a bunch of stuff, it's still going to cost you less than a Prusa. But this was back when more affordable options didn't really exist that were close to set and forget. He said, sir, I'm expecting it to actually function and print. Is that too much to ask? It is when you start doing a bunch of upgrades to it. That is too much to ask. Um Asking its auto bed leveling to work, I don't think is too much to ask, but something tells me they never actually expected the auto bed leveling to work. They were just using it as a Z, as a Z probe. But anyways, let's let's kind of get into the meat and potatoes of this because I I, I don't want to I don't want to take too much time out of people's days here. We can <clears throat> we can hang out and chat in a little bit. But you know, if you're if you're a parent or an adult and you're looking for that first 3D printer, whether it's for yourself, for a family member, for whatever it might be, it, it can be daunting because there are so many options. I mean, just go to Amazon and search 3D printer and you're going to have a bad day. Right? So let's start with companies you should avoid. At all possibilities, you should avoid Creality. And it's not that Creality makes bad printers. They're not good printers, but they're also not bad. Creality doesn't give a damn about intellectual property. They are currently involved in litigation. They steal models from artists. They steal models from individuals. And they steal intellectual property from companies, allegedly. And that's a problem. If you want to align yourself with that, by all means, go ahead. But then maybe you shouldn't like this video and subscribe to this channel 
because I've got a problem with intellectual property theft. And if you don't, then you're not going to like the things I have to say. But either way, uh, I would recommend avoiding Tronxy. Um, they, back in the day, made printers that were dangerous. They didn't have thermal runaway protection. And while that has gotten better, I'll give credit where it's due, it has gotten better. My brother's experience with his printer has been uh, less than ideal. Now, I recognize if I got it in my hands, I could probably get it running. But that doesn't, that that's, that, that's not good. My brother represents pretty much, you know, a beginner target market. And if he can't get it to run... Either he's getting frustrated too easily, which I do think is part of the problem, or it's too difficult, which I also believe is part of the problem. So we have to gauge what the level is that your kid is going to want, right? Or that you're going to want. If you don't have a bunch of time to spend, there are certain companies that we instantly take off the list because you're going to spend a bunch of time. Oh yeah, ANET. Stay, stay away from ANET. A-N-E-T. Stay away from them. Um, bad news bears as far as printers go. Uh, their A net A8 you'll be able to find for dirt cheap. It is a fire hazard. It has caused over a half a dozen house fires, with most of them resulting in, if not total loss, significant loss to the building and property. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. And as Phantom Printer says, a lot of Chinese companies don't care about. IP. Uh, Logan Luckless is saying they've had the displeasure of helping someone fix an X5 essay that is from Tronxy. Horrible machine. Every design decision made was wrong. Gregory Pfeiffer saying Corality sucks so much. <laughs> Phantom Printer saying I'd probably add Anet. Yep, they're on that list as well. Um, Sporluck is asking, should it even be a surprised gift for the holidays, specifically Christmas? I... <sighs> Part of me says yes, right? If you've done your research, you are able to just spring this on somebody. Now, unfortunately, the bulk majority of people aren't going to do that. Um, but if you are listening to this video or you're listening to the audio only of it, you might get what you need from here. If you do still have questions, ways to reach me are in the description down below. Uh, it's YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com is a great way to email the channel, and I'll make sure that I reply to you if you have questions, right? Um, but if you are watching us live, then hey, hit up the chat. Let's have a chat. That's what it's there for. Um, but it, it does unfortunately really come down to what kind of money are you looking to spend? If you're under 500 bucks, I, I think we did a pretty good video covering printers under $500. Um, I will say that I missed some. Um, we were originally going to do 10. And then for brevity's sake, I said, I really got to cut that down to five. And um, <laughs> Zombie Hedgehog got on me, and rightfully so. Uh, he said, where's King Rune in that list? Uh, King Rune makes the KSP KPS3. I don't know, man. It, it, it It's the King Rune KPS3, I think is what it's called. And for the money, it's not a bad printer. Uh, I'm told they're pretty good. King Rune is supposed to send me one. Um, they did send me a couple of rolls of filament. They are supposed to send me a print bed to mess with, but I haven't gotten that yet. Their filament's good. I can certainly recommend the filament, so I, I will give that credit where it's due. They're silk rainbows. Very pretty. Highly recommended. Uh, but from a printer company, it's just the things that I've heard from people. And unfortunately, they don't get a lot of the press that some of the larger companies do. I'd like to help them with that, but it does require them taking the risk on us. And currently, it does not appear they're willing to do so. And that's okay. It happens. So we have to look at what features do you want. I would say for a first printer, auto bed leveling is really trickling down in in the price points for printers so it makes sense to get a printer with it you know printers like the solval sv06 the elegu neptune 3 pro plus and max all of them have auto bed leveling the anycubic uh cobra cobra go cobra go neo those all have it as well it is a cheap 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 thing to add to a printer but it's a monumental pain in the ass if you are the person that has to do it 
All metal hotends are nice to have, but generally speaking, not all that required. I believe they're a great uh, future proof thing, but if you're looking to save a couple of bucks, a lot of times printers without all metal hotends can be had for less money. Now, before you ask Grant, what the hell is auto bed leveling and what the hell is all metal hotend? Let's go back and talk about the auto bed leveling. You have a plate that your printer prints on, and this is the hot end of your printer, right? So it it squirts out hot plastic, right? It's a hot glue gun. It's basically what it is. And you have to use a hot glue gun on a plate of something. If that plate is not level to the nozzle, if it's level to the ground, fine. But then the rest of your printer must also be level to the ground. It needs to be perpendicular to the nozzle. If it is not, you're going to have a problem. Auto bed leveling, or technically it should be called auto bed tramming because it is leveling in two axes, um, or three axes, I guess, technically. Um, tramming, we'll call it leveling for the sake of this talk because companies call it auto bed leveling, where I believe they should call it, call it auto bed tramming, but I digress. Um, what that does is it takes all the effort out of you having to make all these adjustments to the wheels that'll be under the printer. Printers without auto bed leveling will have wheels at the corners to adjust the height of the bed to the nozzle. The printer manufacturers automatically assume their print head is going to be perpendicular to the bed. A lot of times that is not true. And if you find that even when you are properly leveling your plate, that you're not getting a good first layer. There are some things to talk about there. We talk about these a lot with uh, the Print Fix Friday video series, which I am debating on changing. Um, I, I don't know yet. We'll see. Uh, people in the Discord, when we're done with the podcast, I'm going to go live in our Discord server to talk about this because I am debating on... Uh, changing it and if you do want to come hang out with myself and the rest of the musketeers you can do so by joining our patreon at the ten dollar tier or higher and we do that currently to keep the riffraff out uh, i don't want companies coming in and really kind of mucking up the place my, my goal is to have a community of people that really do enjoy being there and those that are in there right now a lot of them are actually hanging out in the chat can validate that we have a pretty cool community where uh we don't really hide anything so you get to learn about my hobbies and what i do uh when i do get a little bit of free time these days but other features you're looking for is dual Z-axis. A lot of these affordable 3D printers are going to be Cartesian. Cartesian is a bed slinger, a machine where the bed goes in and out. Now, you might look at something like the Ender 5 and say, well, that's not a Cartesian. Technically, you're wrong. It is. But it's also from Creality, a printer you should not buy. As someone that was just working on an Ender 5, I spent like 45 minutes trying to fix it before I realized its voltage was set wrong. And that was like 95% of the problems there. Um, but yeah, there are so many things. Uh, what about a magnetic PEI flex plate? A lot of the cheap printers will come with glass and they're coated with this material that the companies call carborundum. Carborundum, and I don't know why they call it that, but it is just silicon carbide that is fused with the glass. Silicon carbide, for those that don't know, is sandpaper. So it will basically sand your nozzles down. We don't want that. That's bad. You, you don't want that. Your nozzles are made of brass. That, 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 that's something you're trying to actively avoid when at all possible. So a magnetic PEI flex plate is really nice because when your print is done, you can take the sheet off and bend it and your parts just pop off. All the machines behind me that you see are magnetic PEI flex plates. Now, the ones you see behind me are Prusa Mark 3S's. I like them, but they're expensive. The kit runs about $850 by the time you get it in to the United States. And with that being said, I do recommend that you get the kit. If there, if you are going to buy from Prusa, you do want to spend the cash to get a Prusa. The kits are worth it, in my opinion. For the mini, I would get the mostly assembled kit. I think the 50 bucks is worth the extra upgrade to not have to put the whole darn thing together. But for the Mark 3S, I think building the printer is really good. It's a great way to kind of connect with your kids uh, or connect with yourself. You know, look, I, I if you say you're buying it for the kid, but it's really buying it for yourself. We all know what's happening here. Let's just go with that. Right. 
And as Travis Albert says, hit that thumbs up if you have it. I got 21 people hanging out and two likes. That's a problem. Let's fix that, people. Uh, David's got wood. Well, I'm, I'm glad you do, sir. Uh, if it does last longer than four hours, you might want to go see a, uh, a doctor. <laughs> I've seen lots of people use Mark 3S and Bamboo Lab X1 as their first foray and get very frustrated when things go wrong. They think more money equals it just works. Yeah, uh, I will say out of my experiences with machines, my Prusas do just work. To give you an idea, I had a client meeting where I had to take a printer to the client. Uh, normally with first time meetings, we bring the printers to the clients if they've never seen one run before. It's a fun little show piece and you get to show off a little bit, right? We take our Prusa Mini with the Revo. That machine has not had a heater core on it for like two months. Um, we had some issues with our obsidian nozzles and no, it is not, it has got nothing to do with the delays. At least that's what I'm told. I had to ship back my obsidian nozzles along with my heater core. Uh, I'm not at liberty to discuss what the issue was. We're still working on trying to figure that out, but we had some issues and uh, I never put the new heater core on. In fact, anytime you, sh you saw me hold up a heater core, that was the replacement heater core for that printer. The night, oop, sorry, hit the mic. The night before, I just stick the heater core on, I screw in the nozzle, and then I go to bed. I wake up, and I take it to the customer. I put it on their table, and I say, just so you know, I did some upgrades last night. It might not work perfectly. The damn thing worked perfectly. Perfectly. This is a Prusa Mini that I put into my car, drove 25 miles, put on a table, clicked print it just works and yes i recognize that i've done some things to make it work better but i still believe a stock person would have worked just fine as well um so let's see what else we got going on here so yes you spending more does not necessarily mean you're going to have a good experience I believe, though, that the Prusas are worth the money, and here's why. It's not because the hardware is worth $1,000. I don't believe Prusas are worth $1,000 if all you're buying them for is the hardware. Prusa comes with a massive resource, being their live chat and their warranty. Prusas come with a one-year warranty. If something goes wrong, you reach out via live chat, where they have real humans 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and you're able to talk to them. And for people that don't understand what they're doing, this can be so invaluable to assist. Now, if you're not huge on reaching out to like a live chat and you would rather work with somebody like me one on one, you can go to our website and you can fill out the form for a initial consultation. It is totally free. It will let you book time in my calendar for 15 minutes, I think is what it books out for. Maybe it's 25, it, but it books out for a short period of time and you'll be able to ask me whatever questions you want. Now I'm busy, I've got things to do. So a lot of times I can't extend that time anymore, but if you come prepared with questions, I should be able to help you out. Sparlux says, I would like to remind potential purchasers that as cool as the videos are, they are time-lapsed hours and hours of printing distilled into minutes on TikTok. Yep. The videos that you see that we release on Tuesday and Thursday for time lapses are hours of printing. And yes, machines like the Bamboo Lab X1 and the P1P are able to do it considerably faster. Um, they're not tried and tested for me to be able to recommend them as first printers. I, I don't know yet. Um, and they're so expensive that it's not just like throwaway money. You know, 200 bucks on a printer is pretty darn close to throw away money in this industry. A thousand dollars is not. Um, FJ Prince says, what is up with eSun filaments at the moment? All the stuff I got the past month does not want to stay on the bed. FJ, I would take a look at your, uh, your print bed itself. You might have some issues on the print bed. Uh, is it clean? Have you washed it with, with hot water and soap? I guess this is a great time for us to talk about that. If you are printing and things aren't sticking to your print bed for whatever reason, check your first layer, obviously. Your first layer should look like glass on the top surface. If it doesn't, we've got ourselves some problems. Go to the Print Fix Friday series. I've talked about it numerous amount times um 
FJ Prince says, try G10 as a build plate as long as you can clean it. With IPA, it works like magic. Well, that's fair. Fan of Printer asks, is Printed Solid sell to individual customers yet? Or are they still education, government, and corporate sales? So here's the funny thing. The video that we put up for the tour of Printed Solid, you know how we joked that it was going to be open to the public on Friday? It was actually that Friday that they opened it up to real people, but they only advertised it on Black Friday. So I, I, I'm like, ha, huh, maybe we sprung that or maybe it was planned and we just got lucky. I, I don't know. It was just very funny uh, to see it. Gregory Pfeiffer says it might be worth mentioning 3D pens for the younger crowd. They're they're not that are not big enough for full scale printing machines yet. 3D pens are great accessories to have, period. They're like little TIG welders for 3D printing. If you have two parts you need to fuse together, 3D pens are a great way to do it. Some people will recommend using soldering irons and melting it all together, but that is stupid dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. A 3D printing pen is like a little TIG welder that you get to use in your hand. It is literally a hot end in a pen, just not as nice as this hot end. So very, very good to have that kind of stuff. Other features you would want to look for are printers with ball bearings. If they have V wheels and there'll be like little black wheels that are on the axes, they're not bad, but they will require maintenance more often in my personal opinion. Ball bearings while louder, right? So they are louder. If you're looking for a machine that is quieter, machines with V wheels will be quieter. Um, they are longer lasting and when i'm looking at a printer that a child is going to be using i want to touch it as little as possible and i would say unless they're very competent with machinery and i don't mean like they're running a ha cnc mill or something right would you trust the kid with a soldering iron would you trust the kid with a power drill would you trust the kid to hold the flashlight while you're doing maintenance on your car well that's going to trigger some dads um, or moms, you know, not, 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 not judgy over here. If that child you would trust with those kinds of things, then yeah, you can get them a printer and let them run it unattended. Otherwise, or uh, without your attention, I should say that you should never run a 3d printer unattended unless there is an adult present, but you can, you know, if, if you're not confident with them running basic power tools, don't let them run a 3d printer without your supervision. I know at a certain age, like when they get Somewhere between the age of 9 and 13, they all of a sudden believe they can take over the world. All kids do this, right? Um, you might want to give them that latitude, but they're probably not ready for it. So keep an eye on them. They will likely burn themselves. You will likely burn yourself. It's part of the deal. When you get that little burn mark on your hand from touching a hot end, you are now fully indoctrinated into 3D printing. Welcome. Um, but pens are great to start with. They're great gifts from grandparents, I think. Um, you know, like the, 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 the grandparent wants to get them a, a, a cool little tool. 3D printing pens are great for that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. It always feels like something that a, that a grandparent would get. And I don't know why I've always had that in my head, but it's what I've always thought. Right. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Could be wrong. But yeah, support is going to be a big deal. And if you're the type of person that doesn't like to tinker, you're going to have to spend the kind of money on a Prusa. Their support is worth the money. Their warranty is worth the money. All of that stuff is worth the money. You do pay a premium for the machine, but it's the non-monetary benefits that you get out of it that I believe make it worthwhile. Prusa even has classes now, which we are going to be working on. Uh, for those that don't know, we are working on a program called the Making Awesome Academy. Initially, it is designed at those that are inventors and looking to take their invention, actually make it real life. The problem is the valley of shadow and death that is product development. We will be, that'll be our first kind of class is walking you through that valley. We have very bright flashlights to help you get there. We might have 3D printed them. I don't know. Um, but then eventually it will be, you know, really, really, really well done videos about different things about your printers. We'll have generic ones on the channel, but if you want really, really good ones that are longer, uh, they will be available on the Making Awesome Academy for a fee. That is, so yes, Grant is going to be paywalling some videos. I'm a business, this is what we do. If you don't like it, sorry, can't help you. Uh, 
My brother says he made a laundry cup holder. It took five hours at 80 millimeters per second. Uh, that's a very large laundry cup holder. Spurlock says teens and children have no patience or attention span. Thanks, TikTok. That's fair. Uh, David's got David's got wood says or be prepared for frustration breaks upgrades and lots and lots and lots of research and, and self-help which you may be fine with hence e3 pro first printer was wonderful with me when they first came out yeah if you are the type of person that doesn't mind putting extra labor into it you can get away by getting a printer without a lot of these features but when you look at something like a Solval SV06, which we do talk about in our printers under 500 video, um, I guess, can one of the mods toss that into the chat for me so I don't have to go and find it? Um, that video has all the links to the printers that I recommend in there. So it's kind of right there for you. Um, Gregory Pfeiffer says, I've said it entirely too many times, but Kidi or Chidi, Q-I-D-I, tech printers are solid choices in clothes and solid construction. They are. They're hard to get a hold of. Um, I really want to take a look at some of their larger machines, particularly their high-end one for carbon fiber. I would love to take a look at it on the channel. But they do not return my emails. At least some of the other companies return my emails with snark. They don't return my emails at all. Uh, maybe they don't monitor their inboxes. I don't know, but I have such a hard time recommending printers that I myself don't have a ton of experience with, but I know kind of the basis of what they're built on and they're not bad. They are a lot of plastic and that can be tough. Um, machines with more plastic on them tend to rattle and resonate more. So you also have to think about where this printer is going to go. I would never put a 3d printer in the room of a kid. That's a bad move. It's a great way for them to get hurt. Um, it, it's it, it, it's not good. So don't do that. 3D printers are best put either if you have a garage that has a little shop in it or something. They're great to be out there. Maybe you've got a little nook in your living room where it could go. Uh, a space in a spare room. Some place where it's not out of reach of the young hands, but it's out of the reach of the young hands without the direct supervision of an adult. Right? We don't want them messing with a 3D printer in the middle of the night. We don't want uh, a print breaking off and them freaking out in the middle of the night. We don't want a failure to wake them up. Right, Kids need kids don't sleep enough as it is. Right, um, But yeah, machines that are fully enclosed in plastic tend to rattle. That's why I wouldn't recommend a Bamboo Lab printer as a good first printer for children. While they might be, theoretically, reasonably solid machines... They're very loud. Like, even in silent mode, they're louder than any of the other printers that I've talked about. And if noise is a problem for you, you're, you're, you're kind of stuck. Okay. Give me just a second. Let's talk about features you don't want. If you find a 3D printer, maybe it's on Amazon, AliExpress, whatever it might be, and you Google it, and you don't find a lot. Maybe you add Reddit to the end of the name, and you don't find a lot. You add YouTube to the end of the name, and you don't find any videos. Avoid it. You might have found a diamond in the rough. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. And neither could anybody else because nobody's used it. I would look for printers that have solid reviews. And if you go to reviewers on YouTube and you look at their videos... Keep in mind that a lot of reviewers, us included, get the printers for free. And while we say we are as unbiased as we possibly can be, or at least I do, it is impossible to remove the fact that I just got a $200 plus 3D printer for free, and all I really have to do is film a video on it. Now, there is a lot of expense in me filming videos, so let's not ignore that, but it is something to bear in mind that... Not everyone is going to be as forthcoming as you might expect. If the reviewer does not talk about how they got the printer, whether it was free or they paid for it, I would take what they say with a grain of salt. It is good to understand where they might have some inherent biases, whether in intentional or otherwise. It's become a thing, one, because it's pretty much required by the Federal Trade Commission that we say those kinds of things, but two, it's an ethics thing. Right. I don't want someone to read or listen to a review that we put out thinking that it's completely unbiased when, you know, it kind of isn't. 
right? And there's no way for me to make it 100% unbiased. So something to note there. Sporlock says a Prusa Mini is roughly the same price as a PS5, just to keep a perspective. And that's true, right? It is very expensive, but I do believe they're worth it. Spurlock says, here's the most important factor. Did the kid actually ask for one and watches 3D Musketeers and YouTube videos to learn? They don't have to watch our channel. It's fine if they don't. I recommend they do, but you might want to keep them away from the podcast because I don't filter myself here. I will say things like shit here that we would bleep out in a regular channel video because these are live. These are not pre-recorded. These are completely live. And because of that, my potty mouth is not filtered. I do try to not cuss as much because it's, it's a little unbecoming, I think. But it is just something that if you do have young ears listening, just something to be aware of. Um, and you know, did they ask all the time for one? If these are a no, then don't buy, Adam Sporlock says maybe they may not know about 3d printing. If they have that engineering mindset, are they constantly playing with Lego? Are they constantly taking things apart, putting them back together with spare parts? That is for weight savings and aerodynamics. Thank you, by the way. But if they're the type of kid that just takes things apart to learn how they work, th this is what my brother and I were as kids, right? We always took shit apart. Always, always, always took things apart. Drove my parents crazy. A 3D printer would have been perfect for us because it lets us make what we think up here in the real world. But, but Grant, hold on, hold on. How would they get from their mind to physical? That is design programs. Um, Tinkercad is one of the best out there for children. It is great. It is legally free and it is browser based. So they can use it, whether it's on a laptop, tablet, Android, iPhone, it doesn't matter. You can use it on anything, and it is legally free, which is awesome. Uh, it is by Autodesk. Autodesk is a pretty good company. They're becoming the Adobe of the 3D world, so eh, um, it is very expensive when you start paying for their software, but when they're kids, you don't have to pay for it. Um, other features that you don't want. Uh, you don't really want to look at a printer for price. Now, if you're looking at, let's say, a Neptune 3 Pro and you see four listings for it on Amazon, you should be relatively comfortable about buying the cheapest one as long as it is a Neptune 3 Pro. There is the Neptune 3 that should be cheaper than the Pro, and that one is missing a couple of the features that the Pro has that I believe are worth it, one of them being the direct drive extruder. With the onset of the Neptune 3, the Cobra and the Soval SV06, I believe that we can confidently say that I do not like Bowden printers for first timers. I believe that direct drive is worth it. Now I say that, and yet I recommend the Prusa Mini. The Prusa Mini is a Bowden printer, but it has such a well-tuned software that comes with it that I really, you don't notice the problems with Bowden on a Prusa Mini, or at least I don't. Some people do. I don't. On any of my Prusa Minis, I have four of them. When we do, or I guess I have five now because I bought a clone. Upcoming video, get subscribed. Uh, we we believe that Bowden just adds a whole extra bit here. And when you can get a all, well, we, we can get a direct drive printer. And direct drive is when your, do I have it handy? No, I don't. No. When your extruder sits right above your hot end, a lot of times they'll clip onto the hot end and it pulls the plastic in from here. If your extruder is way back here and there's a tube that runs to your hot end, that is Bowden or Bowden. I don't know how to pronounce it, honestly. I've always just called it Bowden and no one's corrected me. So I'm going with Bowden. Bowden printers bring a whole different level of complication. You have to deal with backlash. You have to deal with pressure in the tube. There's a bunch of things that you guys have to worry about that I don't think is worth it. And with how affordable these direct drive printers are getting, I believe it's worth it to make the jump to direct drive when you can. I could bring the mic a little bit closer, get you some of that good radio voice. Oh, Joe Williams coming in from Perth, Western Australia. We've got Duff hanging out with us. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, what else we got here? 
Winslow Joy says 3D printer as an art installation. You know, that's probably a good way to think of it. Sporlux says think of it as a tool like power tools, chainsaw, or a stove. Stoves are out in the open, but kids aren't allowed to touch them. Art installations are out in the open, but kids probably shouldn't touch them. 3D printers are roughly the same. And I think it's a great way to connect with a kid, right? If you've got a child and you want to connect with them and do engineering stuff, that's great. But you must also be interested because if you're not, you've got a problem. If you don't show any interest in this product, the kid is not going to show any either. The kid's not going to know how to do this on their own. They need help through it. And maybe you can bring an entire set of videos that will help them get started with the printer. Maybe you can. But chances are you might not be able to do that. And if you're not going to be there with them to work on it, then don't buy it. This is a team sport. 3D printing is a team sport, especially when it comes to kids. And you'll see that in this industry, that a lot of us talk about the community, the community, the community, the community. There are great communities out there. You will find none of them on Facebook. None of them. Facebook is a terrible place. Do not use Facebook for 3D printing groups. There are great 3D printing groups on Discord, though. Might I recommend ours? It is behind a bit of a paywall, the $10 a month tier. Uh, but I believe it is worth it for the amount of attention that we provide. I mean, literally, how many patrons are in the chat that I've jumped on a one-on-one -on -one call with? How many patrons are in the chat that when we talked about music and we talked about my audio room that I'm building and they recommended that I try some music, did I break out my phone and film a video for them so they could hear objectively through my crappy phone mic but be able to hear what I was hearing? It, it, there's a different level here, you know, it, it is, it is still kind of odd that I've never met these people in real life. Although one of them I have, hi Aaron. Um, otherwise, I guess I've met a few of our Patreon supporters in real life, but Aaron actually lives close enough to me that he's like been to my house. Uh, but either way, it, it is kind of, kind of odd. Um, so just be careful about that kind of stuff. Be careful about where you get your information from because it is very easy to get the wrong information and go down a bad rabbit hole. Alvin Norris says, I have several printers and put many hours on them. I love my cadet minis. I've bought three cadets and all of them have failed. I considered another one because of my grandchildren. I guess the I don't know Cadet as a printer company, so I would not be able to recommend them. Fana says Prusa printers are expensive, but paying for the extra support could be a benefit for some new makers in case an issue arises. To be clear, if you do want to actually have me do one on one classes, I bill close to $100 an hour. We do allow groups. With groups, the rate goes up a little bit, but nowhere near as much as it would if it was a bunch of individuals. Uh, but individual classes are like $85 an hour. You will very quickly make up the difference between whatever printer you bought and a Prusa should you need professional help. Something to keep in mind there. Duff says, good point. I feel better after having all those spare screws from when I put my Durango back together. <laughs> Duff lives in the Great White North. So Duff, honestly, the holes might have rusted out. He might not have missed anything. They might have just rusted out. <laughs> Mad Cat is hanging out with us as well. Fan printer says, could you not make an argument that it is easier to fix clogs on Bowden printers? Uh, it's not. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just as difficult to fix uh, clogs on both printers. But I believe if you buy good filament, you buy uh, and you use good settings, you're not going to have clogs. I don't have clogs. The only time I get clogs is when I play with carbon fiber and I'm pushing limits. And that's my fault. Joe Williams says, may I ask, I have six Ender 3s, all modded as per mod community. I'm looking for three new printers that will just work all the time. Saw your vid on the Prusa XL. Budget is 10K for the next three printers. That's actually a pretty sizable budget. I would say, Joe, you're so far on the Prusa XL right now. As they've been taking pre-orders for a year. Uh, I would maybe put in some pre-orders just to get your name on the list. But it's going to be so long until yours might ship. I would see how the Prusa XL comes out. Um, the fully kitted out one's 3500 bucks, So the three of them would go over your budget, but you could get one with a couple of less tools if you wanted. I believe they're going to be good printers, but unfortunately Prusa does not have a great history of first printers rolling off the line. At this price point, I believe they're going to have to 
be good at it. Otherwise, we're going to have some problems. So something to be aware of there. Joe says it is 2.30 a.m. Thank you for hanging out. Joe, it is 1.40 p.m. as I am recording this right now. Madcat says exception for Facebook is the 3DP rescue group. That is fair. Uh, Madcat is, I think he's one of the uh, the guys that run the place, but you guys also have a Discord server, and I believe that is a better place to get assistance. Winslow Joy says Earth. That's right. A lot of you did meet me at Earth. Uh, anyone thinking of attending the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival in April? I am thinking of attending it. Unfortunately, holy crap, Colorado is expensive. It is I've I've preliminarily booked a hotel room for the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and good Lord have mercy, it is expensive. Uh, it is like almost $600 this far out. Um, very, very expensive to stay there. So we are looking at it, though. Uh, Spurlock says if your kid is serious... Look at going to a maker event or Earth, Murph, or similar. Unfortunately, since the human malware incident, that is the pandemic for those that don't know what I'm talking about, the maker community events that occur out in public have died down a lot. You can look for local maker spaces in your area. That's a great place to get resources from. Here in Tampa, we have the Tampa Hacker Space as well as the Amrock Fab Lab, and they're dotted throughout. Uh, the Tampa Bay region, and they're both phenomenal resources to helping people make stuff. And it might be better to take your kid there and see what they are attracted to. Maybe they prefer drones instead of um, 3D printers. Who knows? So companies to keep an eye on that that we would recommend here. Um, Prusa obviously is one to keep an eye on. I would love to see Prusa come out with a more budget-oriented machine, more budget-oriented than the Mini, but I think the Mini is still a good value. Elegoo is a great one to keep an eye on. Any Cubic is okay, but I still question if they're really pushing their FDM line all that much or if they're really going hard in the paint for resin. Resin is not a good first 3D printer for a kid. Do not buy resin for children because resin is toxic, and that is a thing around here. Um, Sovel, obviously, the SVO6 came out of nowhere for me. I was not expecting that. And it appears to be a phenomenal printer, so I would keep an eye on Sovel. Um, there are some smaller companies out there. Construct 3D is a great one to look at, but their price point is high enough that I don't believe they're good first printers. I And I don't think they're trying to be good first printers. I think they're trying to be good second, third, or fourth printers. And Bamboo Lab, um, whether you like them or not, you, you, you do have to keep your eye on them. You, you just have to. It's, it's important. Uh, companies to avoid, we talked about it earlier, Creality, Anet, Tronxy, um, you know, any, it, it, if the name doesn't have a lot of videos or articles or things attached to it, probably not a good company to go with. So be careful. Sorry, I had to get some water there. Spurlock says, also look at your local community college. They might have makerspace. That's a good place to look. Uh, Joe Williams said, did you do a bear upgrade to the Prusa Mark 3S? And if so, what is the name of the video? Do you think it is worth it? I don't believe it's worth it. None of my Prusas have bear upgrades on them. Uh, I believe the Prusa Mark 3S works just fine on its own. That's my personal thing. Winslow Joyce says, on the Prusa launch, I have high hopes since the XL shares a common genesis with the commercial AFS. I would agree. Um, and Spurlock says, I'm noticing at this point you might not get something in time for Christmas. Yeah, it, it is It is getting real tight. And Wednesday's video is going to be my top five resin printers under 500 bucks. if none of you saw that one coming from a mile away. Uh, but it might be too late. That's okay. That's okay. You could put an IOU, maybe wrap up a box and write Prusa on it or write Elegoo on it. Kids will understand. And if things don't come in time, it is what it is. And if that means you have to wait a little bit, you wait a little bit. I don't think it's that big of a deal personally. Um, Fan Printer says, the community college I work at has a certificate program for additive manufacturing. That's cool. That's really cool. I didn't know uh, none of ours do in the area. I wish they did. I would take it. Oh, I'll be cool if I could get, could I get, uh, you know, an honorary one? Cause I feel like I deserve an honorary certificate for an additive manufacturing program. <laughs> 
Winslow Joy says, need a bounce. We'll catch up later. See you later. Have a good one. Matt Cat Yose says, one of these days I'm going to start a drinking game where you take a drink every time Grant says resin is toxic. Well, don't, uh, don't watch the resin videos then. <laughs> Unless you're looking to get plastered. Plastered. Fan of says, I work at Har Harford Community College where Earth takes place. Well, that makes sense. That was a really nice area. I liked that area. Driving... Uh, from Baltimore up into New Jersey was just an absolute treat. If you ever have to make that drive, turn off toll roads. It is so much fun to go through the back roads. It was absolutely worth me being a cheap ass. 100% would recommend. Uh, Spurlock says all the bamboo zealots are tossing their Prusas. Used Prusas can be a good deal if you're into used stuff. I don't believe a used printer is good for first timers. I believe you should look at just buying something brand new. If you can buy it from Amazon because you have at least 30 days to mess with it. And if it doesn't work out, box it back up and send it back. That's what Amazon is there for. That's why you pay for Amazon Prime. Make it useful. So how do we ensure safety? Safety is a big deal, right? I talked about earlier how companies like Anet and Tronxy have both had printers that literally have burned houses down. So how do we ensure safety? One of the big things is keep the printer away from stuff. If you have animals that are curious, let them see the printer when the printer is off. Don't run a printer where animals can get to it. Hilariously, we have a cat. Uh, she's pretty great. Her name is Victoria. She is also on our website. She is our director of marketing and director of HR. It is obviously a joke, but, you know, some people take it seriously. Whatever. But she's never had an interest in the printers, which is interesting because they're all over the house. So y you would think that she would be, but no, could not care less. Loves the little bits of plastic that fall on the floor, though. Loves playing with those. And be careful because cats and dogs can ingest that plastic and it can upset their GI tract. So be careful about that. If you are not certain, build an enclosure or buy one. The hot box from Wham Bam is a great option for that. And if you use code musketeers2022 through the end of 2022, you get 10% off your order at Wham Bam Systems. And you can go jank too, right? You could put a big Tupperware container on it. You could build a lack uh, container for it. Prusa has great uh, files for a lac enclosure, or you could build something out of PVC pipe and acrylic. I've seen people do that too. But if you do that, you really do need to make sure that your printers are functionally safe. And to do that, if you are going to enclose it, a Wham Bam Cloud is a great option. We'll be doing a video on those in the new year, and it is a fire suppression system for 3D printers. So should your printer actually catch fire and the fire touches the cloud, the cloud will explode, covering your printer and everything in the general vicinity with a fire extinguishing media. They are $30. And while cleaning up ABC fire media sucks, you know what sucks more? Having to get what little bits of your memories last after your house burns to the ground. Now, I'm not trying to scare people, and nor am I trying to tell insurance companies that they need to be worried about this. You don't. Modern printers are way safer than you think, but just like you keep, or you should keep, fire extinguishers in your kitchen, it's not that your oven naturally catches things on fire, you're just a ding-dong and don't know how to boil water properly, right? So the human factor means that things can be dangerous, right? And if you don't do something properly... Printers can be dangerous. Keeping a fire extinguisher near a printer and teaching proper fire safety to children is absolutely imperative and very cheap insurance. So please, please, please do it. Even if you need to go get some of those cheap fire extinguishers in a can, start a little fire in a fire pit or something, or go to like your local park with one of those crappy gas grills or uh, charcoal grills and show your child how to put out a fire. That is a very important thing. One, that's just good life skills, but two, it's also a great bonding experience. So do you know that that kind of stuff is always good. Use uh, FJ Print says used prints are still expensive on eBay. Fan of Printer says do not run printers when they when no one is home. That's true. Do not. If for some reason you do, have a webcam watching your printer with either Opico, which is Spaghetti Detective, the 3D Q system, uh, or um, 
Oh, uh, what's Octo Everywhere? There are lots of options for print failure detection. So, you know, be careful about that. Um, Duff said he just had an idea. If you're having issues finding a local 3D printed community, maybe try contacting some local Etsy sellers that print stuff and see if they know of any. That's not a bad thing to 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 do, I don't think. Uh, Shotgunner5609 says, good news is mail volumes have been pretty manageable for us on the West Coast, so feel confident in ordering. All my stuff has come in a day or two earlier so far. <laughs> Duff says, Victoria shirts when? I don't know. I, I really like embroidery, and I don't want to go with screen-printed shirts. Um, I'm awaiting the latest samples from the embroiderer. Uh, we had some color mix-ups, so I'm now awaiting new samples from our embroiderer for uh, company shirts to have available on the store or something. I, I don't know. Still weird that I I'm going to start selling merch. It, it, it feels weird to me. Spurlock says, my two blind cats loved the noisy printer bot Simple Metal. Oh, that takes me back. I love the Simple Metals. They're just so cool. Gregory Pfeiffer says, please avoid for a first printer unless you want to learn everything about the printer as you fix everything i don't know what they're referencing but i'm assuming they're referencing enders joe Williams says thank you for the stream saw my first vid of you yesterday so glad to see your real opinion will binge watch your old vids so glad i'm able to catch you live thank you for the time you sacrificed for us dude i am so passionate about sharing my passion with others it's why even when people that call us that can't use our services i will still try to educate them and help them understand things better because if if i can help them kick the can down the road and let them be ever so slightly smarter than when they came in i've done my job right and i'm passionate about this stuff here's a secret for those of you that don't know uh, i actually tone down my emotions for the videos because if i was as emotional as i regularly am i'm like i'm half latin okay just i know you can't tell i'm half latin i promise um my i'm so passionate i i i, I it, it's hard to describe i really love things or i really hate things right and i could rant about creality and their bullshit for hours um but youtube commenters used to call me out and say that i'm fake that my emotions are fake so what did I have to do? I had to start faking less emotions. It, it, it's so funny. And now nobody's ever complained about it. In fact, you all like the Grant rants. That, that, that's fun for people now. But those are toned down. Patreon, get the full ones. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, look, we have over 500 videos. Um, so best of luck in binging them. Um, the, podcast ep the podcast series are 52 episodes per episode season so we're on season three so we're you know about a quarter of the way through our third year of podcasting every single week so kind of crazy um why are we talking about kittens i don't know i said but if you do find a couple of outdoor kittens abandoned by their mama a shoebox sitting on a heated bed is way better to warm them up i i okay um fan printer says grant isn't your company making something similar to the wham bam cloud nope we do not make a fire suppression system we are working on the politician which i have not had a lot of time to work on but it is our uh heater and filter combination for 3d printers uh worst peter uh who's often in the videos has been assisting me in one of the latest revisions of it. And I am hoping to get some time this week to dedicate into testing it. So yeah. Yeah. Shirts are in the works. Uh, they're embroidered with the company logo, similar to what you see that I wear. Uh, that is what we will be uh, making for people, both polos and t-shirts. So keep an eye out. Joe Williams asks, what was my first printer? Um, <laughs> technically it was a thingomatic uh for makerbot i started back in 2008 so my first printer was a thingomatic uh i used it at the job that i was working i worked at mosey here in tampa that's where i 
kind of learned more about it. But I was building printers for a while. So technically like a Mendel, my first commercial printer that I owned or my first off the shelf printer that I personally owned was a printer bot press. Uh, cannot recommend. It was an absolutely terrible, terrible, terrible printer. Um, Joe Williams says, company, sorry, do you have a business? Yes, 3D Musketeers is my business. I have 40 3D printers. Um, the YouTube channel was just something that we do for fun. And now it's turned into a full-time job as well. But yes, I have a business. Um, I have been doing 3D printing professionally for over 10 years now. Um, you know, I guess we can go through my qualifications if you guys want but uh, my company was voted best in the industry five years in a row for full color 3d printing we have worked with the likes of snoop dog and the smithsonian among others we have had parts in major motion pictures including marvel's age of ultron uh and uh paranorman and the box trolls we have had parts in all of those movies um we have worked with steve aoki anthony anderson lawrence fishburne um ronda rousey justin bieber but we've worked with a bunch of people uh most recently we've done work with some pretty cool companies here locally some i can tell you guys about some i cannot so yeah yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of experience. Although I have no formal experience with three D printing, this is all kind of learned throughout the years of riding the struggle bus, and that's okay. People will do that, just like if I ask people to, they will like the stream. Wink, wink. Um, it, it is one of those cases where you do learn by doing. And I look at some of these printers, like the Sobel SV06 at two hundred bucks. It pisses me off how good that printer is for the freaking money, right? My first cheap printer was an was a Wanhao i3, and good lord, those printers are terrible. Literally, I set one on fire for a video. Um, I was trying to let it set itself on fire, but it was not getting there. It was too windy that day, Florida being what Florida is. And I live in Tampa, for those that don't know. Um, not so we're based out of. But um, yeah, it's it's like it's it's it it it's easy mode, right? Like my first printer that I built was like real crazy. It was a, the nozzle was a bolt that you drilled holes in. So from the top side, you drilled a, uh, a 1.75 or 1.8 millimeter hole. And from the bottom, you used a PCB drill to get your nozzle diameter. You then took nichrome wire from toasters and wrapped it around the bolt. And that was your heater. It was so jank, like it was so jank, but it worked and it was really cool. Um, obviously, we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, we, we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> Thank God. But yeah, it is. Uh, Spurlock says, imagine Kevin from Home Alone with a 3D printer. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much me. I am Kevin from Home Alone with, but with a 3D printer. But yes, imagine if Home Alone had the technology of 3D printers and what the kind of crazy stuff Kevin would have been able to do. God, can someone make a movie that is Home Alone but with 3D printers? Oh my God, that would be so cool. I am so excited for that. Please somebody, I, uh, hold on. I need to make a note of this. Because I've got a friend who is a TV show producer, and I'm going to send her this. Uh, home alone, but with 3D printers. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Eddie the Engineer has a video about smoke detector linked to a power bar for auto shut off i can post the video if you are fine with it that is something that we are working on as well if you want to post it you're welcome to but with home automation you can use smoke detectors as a means to kill power to your printer um however 3d printers don't generally smoke before they're on fire so i'd rather just have something that because like if you kill the power the plastic is still flammable, so it doesn't matter. I'd rather have a full-on suppression system as well as a smoke detector. The more the merrier. Fan of printer says, I love the Grant Rands. 30 HP is here. How you doing? 
Uh, Joe Williams says, can you make a video about the printers you have and what you would charge because of your experience? I think, I think would help any young adult looking to make a 3D printing business in the future. Ah, I have done quite a few videos on 3D printing businesses, and we're going to do another one in January as we get all the holiday noobs coming in that are looking to start a 3D printing business. The one thing I don't talk about is pricing. I will tell you that you are underpricing, but I will not tell you what we charge or how we charge it. If you would like to send me files to quote, you're happy to do so, but I will tell you that our pricing varies based on the complication of the part. I have a very complex algorithm that we use with over 16 different variables, one of them being, how much do I like the customer? If you are a pain in my ass, you're paying more money. Um, and it is not as straightforward as, oh, it's just X amount for X amount of plastic. It's not. Uh, it is a factor. The big factors are material use and time, right? Um, so it, it is not that straightforward, but we have absolutely um, talked about 3D printing businesses before. Uh, Phantom Prince says, do I print at home as a hobbyist? I do, not as much as I used to. Uh, I'll make some stuff here and there for myself, but I've already printed so much stuff for myself that I don't really find that I use it often anymore. So that's more of a thing. Um, Dust is when you look at all those o OG hot ends, it looks like collections of stuff confiscated for prisoners. <laughs> You're not wrong. It really does have the 3d general help. David Wilson says another person that I've met in person. How you doing? Um, was change, not charge. I'm retired. I 3d print toys with my wife and, and my wife gives them away. Xmas day. My main home is province Philippines last year made 300 toys. That's pretty cool, dude. That's pretty cool. Mike Elmore says, I love charging the nuisance tax. BYAA, because you're an asshole. <laughs> That's the BYAA charge. Um, yeah, asshole tax. It's always asshole tax. I have gone way off topic here, so let me get back on topic. Um, the next topic is going to be getting involved more than just the buying experience. We talked about this a little bit where I want you, the parent, the individual listening, to be involved with your children. One, stop being absent parents. Don't let YouTube be your damn parent, right? Be more involved. My dad was involved. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe he should have been less involved. I don't know. My dad was always involved in the dumb shit that I did. Um, but he also knew when to leave me alone and just let me tinker and let me make mistakes and let me hurt myself and let me do dumb things, right? When I accidentally picked up the soldering iron for the wrong side, he's like, that sucks. Or when, uh, this is my favorite story, and it's the one that I will always remember, is uh, I had broken my, 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 my finger riding my bike. Uh, uh, open manhole cover. Problem. Fell right into it. Rolled. Broke my finger. Came home. Hand was like this. Dad's like, eh, finger's probably broken. Let's take it to, the, to, uh, uh, to urgent care. Got it splinted. It was broken. Can we get groceries? And it's summer, maybe late fall in, in Florida. The, the windows in the house were open. I'm the last one to go inside and I'm shutting the door behind me with my broken arm, with my broken finger and it slams on my hand and uh, I just roll on the floor crying in pain. It hurts so bad. And without skipping a beat, my dad says, well, I can tell you it's broken and he's not wrong. He's not wrong. So that's one of my favorite stories of my dad because <laughs> it's just like what is one of those such a dad thing to say. Um but yeah, yeah, he wasn't wrong. It was broken. <laughs> it was already broken. But if it wasn't for the splint, I probably would have lost that finger. So um, this finger might be a little twisted and, and a little kind of weird, but um, the splint saved it. So take it with a grain of salt, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, you got to get more involved in just in something more than just the buying experience. Um, you know, Watch the videos with your kid. Find the videos to watch with your kid, whether it's my videos, Uncle Jesse, Joel Telling, Tom's 3DP, uh, Angus of Maker's Muse, Stefan of CNC Kitchen, uh, 3D Nero, uh, Nero 3D. It, so many good channels out there. Chep, 3D Printing Professor, uh, BV3D, Brian Vines, so many good channels out there. So many great, a uh, Modbot, freaking Modbot's almost at 100,000 subscribers. Go subscribe to him if you haven't. 
Um, <laughs> Shotgunner says I'm a Looney Tunes character. Yeah, I might be. Um, I might be. But yeah, it's uh, there's so many good channels out there. There are bad ones too. But go find channels that you really enjoy the content of people with. Comment. Let them know that you like it. Give them suggestions. Dude, as a content creator, I love when people comment on the videos with suggestions for future videos because it means I don't have to think about it. It's just there. We have an entire channel in our Discord dedicated to... um dedicated to video topic ideas because that's literally what it's for it is for video topic ideas and i want to like find video like this topic was in that channel um it was pretty cool so yeah like be present as a parent be present um, so, and how can you as the parent learn before the printer arrives, right? You're going to be doing your research, hopefully and not just buying the cheapest thing on Amazon. So understand what you're getting yourself into. Look at the difference between Bowden and direct drive. Look at how to level a build plate. Maybe get Chep's leveler while you're at it. Video coming soon, by the way, I'm going to race my brother to level a printer by hand before he can do it with Chep's leveler. And we'll see who can do it faster. Jonathan has very little experience doing this. I have quite a bit of it. We're identical twins, so it might be a fun video. Because uh, Chep did actually send me a pair of them totally free, which is very nice. The man, I do appreciate that kind of support. Uh, let me see. Uh, any good good comments here? Oh, and BB3D just for the dad jokes. Mad Cat says, yeah, BB3D makes great dad jokes. 100%. Um... 3dhp says 3dhp has a good channel they do they do go subscribe to 3dhp if you haven't um the 3d musketeers guy though i don't know about him he's kind of weird um uh, and there's a comment i have to remove love that not okay don't be like that you know who you are you know your comment that i just removed stop that we don't allow that in here um, Joe Williams says, as a parent, what if you don't understand 3D printing, but your kid does? Do you have classes online for parents to join? We don't. It is something that I've thought about doing, but it is so complicated to do online classes unless everybody has the same printer. Um, because then it's, everything is different for people. Right. That's the goal of the Making Awesome Academy videos that yes, there will be a paywall behind them, but they're going to be way more dedicated into specific, specific prints and printers. That's going to be the idea. Um, it, I can try. Um, Joe Williams, if you email me, YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com, we can have a conversation about this because it is something that I've wanted to do, but I don't know the right way to approach it. And I know if I approach it a bad way, we don't hit the right market and we don't provide the value that people want. Um, he's asking if I sell printers. No, we only, um, we only make parts. I don't want to sell printers because I don't want to deal with people that don't have patience for their 3D printers and want me to fix it when they're only spending $200. So that's uh, that's just something to point out there. So uh, videos are a great way to learn, I think. Watching some of the great YouTubers out there will get you a lot of that information that you need. Uh, and realize in January, we are doing entire video series, things like uh, lingo, things to know about your slicers, that kind of stuff are going to be videos that we're doing because I want to hit the newbies that have just gotten their machines and are looking to learn a little bit. That's what I'm excited about. Um, Mike Elmore says, Udemy has a great resource of 3D printing to get basic overview of the process. They aren't in depth. That's a great option if you are the type of person that doesn't like the YouTube style of things. Udemy is a great place to look as well. Uh, Lightspeed says you could easily sell online classes to school. Schools are desperate for help and they are super underfunded. You can. My preference is... Um, yeah, my, my, my preference is that I go to schools. 
Um, I try to visit all of our local schools that I can and see if I can assist them. I don't charge teachers. It's not my goal. So when I have some free time, I'll call up schools and see if they've got 3D printers that um, that need help. Um, because, again, teachers aren't paid enough money and schools may not have the cash. And I'd rather educate the teacher so that they can educate their students rather than have the thing sitting and collecting dust. But that's some of the little give backy things that we do around here. Um, so Duff says, oh, nice. So a video from STL to print. Yes. <laughs> Mike Elmo says, I want a course on manually writing G code. You are a masochist. I will not do a video on that. Go to the Marlin wiki or something and find the G code commands. It's such a pain in the ass to write G code. <laughs> um, materials. Materials are a big freaking deal. Let's talk about materials for a second. Good Lord. Have mercy. So let's assume you didn't buy a printer with an all metal hot end. And an all metal hot end means it does not have PTFE that goes into the hot zone. The hot zone is what is silver on here. The gold is not the hot zone. If your PTFE goes down to the bottom of the gold, you're fine. If it goes past that, that is not an all metal hot end. If your printer is limited to 260 degrees centigrade, it is not an all metal hot end. If you do have an all metal hot end, it will be capable of 300 degrees centigrade. <laughs> and yes, Everything is in centigrade. Don't change it to inches. Metric is better. If you disagree with me, you're wrong. But I still love you. Um, if you are running a non-all metal hot end, you will be limited to materials like PLA and PETG. Under no circumstances should you buy ABS filament. One, ASA is better. But two, ABS filament just sucks to print with. Start with PLA. It is so unbelievably forgiving. It is an easy material to use. It is cheap. It is ubiquitous. And now with how many companies exist out there, pretty easy to get. Whether you want it fast or you want really good quality, everybody makes filament at this point. If I might make a recommendation, Printed Solids Jesse PLA is a wonderful material at less than $25 a kilogram made in America and ships free over $45. That's three kilos gets you free shipping. Get three kilos. It's going to last you a while. Another great gift is their, uh, their monthly subscription box when they do open it back up. I get it every month. I absolutely love it. One unique color generally every month, and one regular color to help fill your racks of filament that you see behind me. Um, and Jesse PLA is made and sourced in America. It's actually in Newark, Delaware. I toured Printed Solid, and it was so much fun. Dave gave myself, Amber, Joel, Telling, and David Tobin, we were the four people that were there, the nickel tour, and then said, go film whatever you want. I don't care. There were two things he told us not to show, so you didn't see them in the video, but otherwise, he did not care. Go film whatever you want, unattended, I will not be there to watch you, and also, he wanted to be in Nero's video because he had sponsored Nero to go to Earth, so I totally understand that. I would have loved to have Dave in my video, but it probably was more fun to have Nero sitting at Dave's desk <laughs> playing Dave. That was, that was such a fun video. But being able to go through Printed Solid was awesome. And if you are a member of our Patreon, the behind the scenes of that is released with almost two hours of content. So there's over an hour and a half of content that did not make it to the regular video, including a almost entire song of Amber and I dancing, if that's your kind of thing but yeah start with pla petg for the stuff that you need a little bit more temperature strength for but pla is pretty much good for anything if you don't leave it in a hot environment i've used pla in fish tanks i've used it outside i've used it as mechanical parts pla is a very very good material to use petg if you need it to be a little bit stronger it's a great material as well <laughs> joe Webb says i have realized some older people are visual learners because they have trouble reading english Oh, because that they have trouble reading English is not always their first language. Have you thought of doing a voiceover in another language on videos? If there is someone that would like to do a voiceover, 
I would be willing to work with them on that. That would be something that I would absolutely look at. And as Duff says, the Alien 3D subscription might be a nice thing to add with a printer gift. It absolutely is. Um, Josh, who's actually local, is about an hour-ish north of me uh, with Alien 3D. Great guy, by the way. Really, really great guy. 100% recommend him. Um, does the subs does a subscription box, which comes with a project every single month. It does not always come out on time. It's not normally Josh's fault. Um, but they're great kits. Uh, Fernando DSK 001, uh, is the guy that does most of the coding for, and they've had some really cool projects. It's like, uh, it's like KiwiCo, but really for hardcore makers. I would love KiwiCo as a sponsor, by the way. I would love to build their kits. I, I look at the kits. I'm like, I would love having fun building one of those kits. It'd be so much fun. Uh, but yeah, the Alien 3D kit is great. And you can get it with the filament or without the filament. It's up to you. Uh, Mr. Baxter is here. Sorry, I'm late. Hope you're doing well. We both have the same name. His name is Grant as well. So I'm always going to call him Mr. Baxter because there can only be one Grant. <laughs> um, Spurlock says PLA works great for painting too. Don't forget if they paint something, they'll also want to paint. Uh, or if they print something, they'll also want to paint. Yep, that's true. You can paint on PLA with acrylic paint. No problem. Um, so easily washable and all the fun stuff. You could do it outside without risking the part melting or anything like that. Uh, when you do buy a printer, buy filament. Most come with scraps. Do not use the filament that your printer comes with. Throw it in the bin. Unless it's a Prusa, that's good filament. But normally speaking, the, the translucent white filament your printer comes with is absolute garbage. Recycle it. Um, so buy some good filament that comes with it. Atomic makes great filament. IC3D makes great filament. Push Plastic makes great filament. I'm told Polar 3D makes good filament. Cookie CAD makes great filament. We're going to start using them more often on the channel. Um, Proto Pasta, amazing colors. Expensive filament, but amazing colors that you get from Proto Pasta. So great Great options out there. Uh, Lucas. Oh, Carvalho. Carvalho. Hopefully I'm not butchering that. Says, hi, love your videos. Could you talk about nozzles for abrasive filaments such as wood PLA? What would you recommend for a V6 block on a Prusa Mark 3S? Well, first, I would recommend leaving your brass nozzle in if you are using wood PLA. Wood is not tougher than brass, and you will be okay. If you do want a nozzle for doing tough materials, like uh, glow-in-the-dark. Glow-in-the-dark filament is abrasive. Do not print it on a standard brass nozzle or carbon fibers. My recommendation is always going to be a diamond nozzle, but they're very expensive. They're $100 for the nozzle, but they have gone on sale for as low as 75 bucks over Black Friday and Cyber Monday. If you're looking to spend a little bit less money, the Nozzle X from E3D is roughly 40 bucks and is a good choice as well. However, you will need to up your temps, whereas with the diamond, you will need to lower your temps. Um, I love my diamond nozzles. They print like Swiss watches. They come with a lifetime warranty, as does the Nozzle X, but I like that I have to lower my temps. I was printing, kid you not, carbon fiber nylon at 220 degrees centigrade. And those of you that have printed carbon fiber nylon know how cold that is. It normally likes to print around 260 to 280, but that's with a hardened nozzle. So a hardened nozzle is 10 C above a brass nozzle. And then the diamond is at least 10 to 15 C below a brass nozzle for temperatures. I was printing carbon fiber nylon at 220 C and it was totally fine. It's crazy to me, <laughs> but yeah, be careful with filaments just buy generic colors if you want to buy crazy colors that's fine but do not buy glow in the dark it is abrasive and can cause problems mr baxter asks about micro swiss nozzles i've used them back in the day on the one how printers and they worked really well um i i don't see any reason not to recommend them so that th that is that is something um Joe Williams says, love your background. It's a real workshop. Your printers are not running. Have you printed a Groot in wood? What is your favorite bust print like Deadpool? They are not running because I have been lazy. I went to bed at 10 p.m. last night and I woke up at like 7 a.m. I, oh my God, I have not had a night's sleep like that in so long. I got two hours the night before and it wrecked me. 
Uh, so I actually slept. I've had a lazy Sunday. It has been phenomenal. I have needed a lazy Sunday for a long time. Like a long time. There are Patreon members that are in different times. They're like, you're still awake. I'm like, yep, still awake and working. So I finally took a, a lazy Sunday because I was either going to pass out on my keyboard or I was going to pass out in my bed. So I decided bed was better. Go to hell, Duff. He said, holy crap, grandpa. Go to hell, Duff. <laughs> Um, I love Wexter and Fotis. Uh, their, their work is amazing. If you're looking for bus, uh, to do either in resin or FDM Wexter or Fotis mint, absolutely amazing designers, both former podcast guests mods. If you want to post those episodes, you absolutely can. They are great, great modelers. Uh, here's a bat girl by Wexter. Beautiful model, amazing detail. We've got, and these are just things that are sitting on my desk. We've got the Franken Bowl by Fotis Mint. Gorgeous part, lots of detail on that. Um, so great modelers, highly recommend their Patreons. Nice and cheap, really, really, really good. Um, but yes, normally you will see the printers running. If the printers aren't running, that means the business is not busy. And I may be just doing things for myself. That's the way it goes. Sometimes the winter is our slow season. Um, Lucas says, I am new to 3D printing and trying to learn as much as possible. How often do you dry your filament? What do you use to dry them? And how do you store them after you are done printing? Oh, I love this topic so much. Uh, <laughs> I live in Tampa, Florida, which for those that don't know, is a swamp. You might as well call me Shrek and make me green. It is very damp here. It is currently 57% ambient humidity in my room and about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It is 68 outside, which is 20 degrees centigrade. So I should probably open some windows, but that's because it rained. And that's why it is so damp in here because it rained. Um, Florida is very damp. I will walk outside. It will be 80 plus percent ambient humidity. This is normal for us. Um, so for drying, if I see it start to string, it'll go in a dryer. When we do our time lapses, normally those print out of dryers just because it's better. Um, Spurlux, is it dank or moist? It is moist. There you go. Enjoy. I have now ruined our viewer audience. Um, PETG will t uptake water pretty quickly, but not in a really bad way. It'll just start to get stringy. Um, if you are worried about water, then just print out of dry boxes, right? Dry boxes are relatively cheap. You can get them for 35 bucks or less, or excuse me, you can build one yourself. Uh, you are able to build one with an old food dehydrator pretty easily. There are ways to do it online. Uh, nylon and all that is stored down on the, on the last cart over there. The laptop screen is in the way. Last cart over there is all of our exotics. That is all stored in um, uh, sous vide bags. So reusable sous vide bags uh, that we vacuum down with desiccant. And when we run our dryers, I toss desiccant in there to dry out the desiccant. Um, but generally speaking, I leave all my filament open air because I just don't care. Um, very, very, very easy. But yeah, as Logan Luckless says, lives on the other side of the state. It is not uncommon for the summer to have 80 to 90% humidity in his garage. Yep, that's true. Florida is very hot. Very, 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 very damp. So yeah, um, filament dryers are great gifts, um, but I, they're not really all that necessary. Just make sure you don't overheat your filament and life will be good. PLA, PETG, those are my favorites to start with. And I think you can get 95% of the 3D printing that you would need with those two materials. If you do want to print in things like glow in the dark, make sure to get a hardened nozzle or a bunch of brass nozzles because you will be changing them. Changing nozzles is going to be a thing. What will be a video that we cover soon. And these IKEA carts are awesome for filament storage. Um, they are IKEA Vesken carts. I don't recommend putting, uh, I think I have eight of them here. Yeah. I should really have had seven. There's not enough room in between them and they tend to get caught on each other. But when I do actually organize them and get them all perfect, they're really great. Rep boxes are great for storage as well. Although a rep rack, 
is probably the best way to go. It is fully printable, and it uses EMT tubing, the steel tubing that you get from the electrical section at your favorite home improvement store, and it is fully open source, so if you do not live in the United States and you are looking to make a rep rack, you can modify it to fit your needs. Those are amazing. If I had the space, I would run rep racks, and they're freaking awesome. Um, Joe Williams says he's never used a 0.6 nozzle. How do I adjust for bigger nozzles? Can you just trust that changing the size in the slicer? Um, I use Prusa slicer. That'll be a video that we talk about, uh, in January, all about slicers. Maybe we'll do that last week of December, but all about slicers and, uh, my favorite ones. I love Prusa slicer. I'm a Prusa fanboy. I've never lied about it. Big, big, big Prusa fanboy here. Um, and I love Prusa Slicer. It's a great software. It integrates with any 3D printer. It just works. Um, and when I change my nozzle diameter, it will force me to change my material to the material with the nozzle diameter. If I change my nozzle diameter, I must also then adjust my extrusion widths. If you do both of those, you're good to go. Nothing else needs to change. Um, and as long as you have your max flow rate set. So for a Mark 3S with... The standard hot end, it's 15 millimeter, 15 cubic millimeters per second. And you can put the printer up to 600 millimeters per second. It will only run up to what the hot end can handle. It will not let it run any faster than that. So things to note there. We do change nozzles, but with the Revo system, I find myself changing nozzles way more often. This is one of my Revos. This is going on one of our Prusas. Absolutely love the Revo system. Um... Great option as an upgrade for those that are looking for upgrades. Um, Mr. Baxter says tolerances will not be as tight as a 0.4. Uh, kind of. I get a little bit less tolerance, but we're still able to hit like two and a half thou instead of one and a half thou when we're really, really trying with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. But the Revo is amazing for those that don't like changing nozzles that want to. But generally speaking, a 0.4 nozzle will solve 95 plus percent of what you're trying to do, period. So I think this about covers it, guys. I, I think we, we've got a lot done in an hour and a half. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming by and hanging out. This has been a great time. Uh, any final thoughts before we wrap it? Uh, if you do have anything that you want me to cover real quick, let me know in those comments. Otherwise, I think we're going to wrap this one up here. Sorry, grabbing a bit of water while I wait for comments to, to flow in. Um, yeah, Duff says, love the Revo. If you clog, you just replace the nozzle. That is great. Um, Lucas says, would you recommend printing wood PLA using the 0.4 diamond back or should I go for the 0.6? Uh, I would go for the 0.6. You can do it on a 0.4, but a 0.6 will be more beneficial to you, I think. Um, it will clog less on fibrous materials like carbon fibers. Um, on the videos that we did of Diamondback, I do have affiliate links to them. So if you are looking to kick a couple of bucks back to us, we greatly appreciate you do use those affiliate links. Um because those are not cheap nozzles. Um, but I will say I've loved every one of them that I have. They run like Swiss watches and we will be converting all of our printers that can have them to them. Uh, and I really hope they do a diamond Revo. That would be dope. That'd be so dope. Williams asks, what's the smallest nozzle that I've used? A 0.15. And it is terrible. And I hate it. It is terrible. But yeah, guys, that's all I got for you all today. Don't forget to hit a like on your way out. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Season three, episode 13. Let's freaking go. And if you are a Patreon member, I'm going to the discord. So I'll see you there.